Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Manu Sakya. I'm your host today uh, in the 20th episode of uh, this SLS talk, student lecture series, organized by uh, SESC GSC Graduate Students Club. So today we have invited Mr. Yu Ming, uh, Yu Ming Tian. Uh, today he is giving a presentation on text to human, text driven controllable human image generation. Uh, Mr. Yu Ming Chiang is uh, currently a PhD student at uh, MM Lab. Uh, I guess it is multimedia lab uh, in our university. And he's supervised by Professor Tseu Wei Liu and Professor Chang, Chang Chang Liu. Lo. So he got his bachelor degree in computer science from Ing Chai Honors College, University of Electronic Science and Technology of China in 2019. So his research interests include image generation, manipulation, and restoration. He is also the recipient of Google PhD Fellowship 2022. So without further delay, let me congratulate uh, Yu Ming for receiving this wonderful uh, Google PhD Fellowship. And uh, uh, the stage is Yu Ming, it's all yours now. Uh, you can uh, start your presentation. But before that, I would like to request all the participants to mute themselves. So after the presentation, uh, we are going to have a Q&A session. So uh, as soon as the presentation uh, presentation is over, uh, you can unmute yourself and then you can ask queries or you can write your queries uh, in the chat box also. And then I will... Uh, I will repeat that one. Thank you very much. Yuming, please uh, go ahead. Your slide oh, yeah. is already there, yeah. Yeah, uh, thank you for your introduction. And hello everyone, uh, my name is uh, Yuming Zhang and currently a, a second year PhD uh, in SCSE. And today I'm going to share my uh, recent work on SIGGRAPH 2022. And the title of the paper is Text to Human. Uh, text-driven controllable human image generation. And this work is done in collaboration with uh, Dr. Shuai Yang and Mr. Hao Nan Chou and uh, Dr. Wen Yan Wu from Sense Time Research and, and my two advisors, Kevin Loy and Zui Liu. And then I will start my uh, sharing of uh, on this paper. So before we start, let's just look at some background. And recent years, we have witnessed the rapid growth of image generation since the emergence of uh, generative adversarial networks. And uh, nowadays, we can easily to generate uh, diverse uh, faces of high fidelity using the pre-trained style gun. And the, the wonderful pre-trained style gun and further supports some uh, several downstream tasks such as the uh, facial editing, and we can easily to manip uh, we can easily manipulate the the human faces, uh, like uh, adding the bands for this women, uh, for 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 this woman, and we will we can we can add the smiling for for her, and the second uh popular application is the face stylization and give a uh given a a realistic image and we can use the, the style gun to transfer it into the uh, cartoon style gun, uh, like, like, uh, like the cartoon styles. So uh, this is the, uh, uh, the human faces. And in this paper, we study another type of human related media, the human full body image. And as, as shown in this picture, uh, the human full body images are more diverse and richer and fine grained in content com compared to the human faces. And similarly, the hu uh, human full body image generation also have wide applications, including the virtual trial and the uh, post transfer, like to transfer the, the post of the, uh, the, the target uh, of, of, of uh, from the given video to the target person like this uh, like this one. So it, it is important to to generate the high fidelity human images. And also from the perspective of applications and interactions. And for layman users, it's also 
even desirable to intuitively control the synthesized human images. For example, they may want to generate a person uh, wearing a florable t-shirt and jeans without any expert software uh, knowledge. So uh, human image generation with explicit textual controls make it possible for the users to create the 2D avatars more easily. However, uh, the controllable human image generation faces the, the following three challenges. The first one is that compared to the human faces, the human body images are more complex with multiple factors uh, because uh, the, the, the human image itself contains the diverse human poses and the complicated cellular holes of the clothing and the, the, uh, the, the diverse textures of the clothing. And also uh, in the to generate a high fidelity human full body images, we also need to generate the high fidelity human faces. So it is much more challenging. And secondly, the existing human full body image generation methods fail to generate the diverse styles of clothes since uh, they often tend to generate the clothes uh, with some simple patterns like pure color, let alone the the, the diverse fine grain controls on the textures of the clothes. And thirdly, the generation of the clothes with textual controls relies on the additional fine grain annotations. So in this paper, we, we propose to solve the, 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 the aforementioned three challenges. Uh, before we start, uh, let, let's just look at uh, uh, look at the overview of our pr proposed pipeline uh, by a uh, video. So in this work, we propose a text-driven controllable human image generation task. And we first provide a system with the text describing the shapes of the clothing. Like in this setting, we will want to generate a short sleeve t-shirt and short pants. And then the human parsing maps will generate it accordingly. And then we provide the system with the textures uh, about the descriptions of the textures of the desired uh, clothes, like the pure color t-shirt and the denim pants. And then the, the human full body image will generate it accordingly. Yeah, that's the overview of our pipeline. And then we will move into the some technical details of the, the proposed text to human. And this is the overview of the, the, the framework of text to human. And due to the complexity of the human body images, it is challenging to handle all involving factors in a single generative model. So we decompose the human generation task into two stages. The first stage is to translate the given human pose to the human parsing. And the second stage is to translate the intermediate uh, result human parsing to the final human image. And this is the, uh, the, the text to human is the two stage framework. So let's start with the first stage. So the whole framework starts from a given human pose and we will provide the system with the text for the clothes shapes like uh, a person with short sleeve t-shirts and long pants. And firstly, we will translate the, the text descriptions into some one whole shape attributes. And this is achieved by computing the, the, the word embeddings of the given text between some predefined texts. And we will uh, uh, select the, 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 the the uh, corresponding attributes with the highest similarity and then translate them to uh, the one whole shape attributes. And then we will uh, embed the one whole shape attributes to into a unified feature via a, a attribute embedding module. And the attribute embedding module is composed of uh, several fully connected layers. And then the <clears throat> This feature will be fed into the post to parsing module together with the human post. And the post to parsing module is a U shape uh, uh, net framework. And then the human parsing will be generated accordingly. And this is the first stage. And then uh, the second stage is that we will give the 
uh, the system another text for the clothes textures like a t-shirt with pure color and long pants with uh, pure color. And similarly, we will translate the text into the one whole texture attributes. And uh, in this work, considering the high diversity of clothes textures, uh, we introduce the concept of code book. Uh, the, the, code, the, the concept of code book is widely used in some VQVAE based methods. And here we just adopt it in, into our framework. So to adaptively, adaptively characterize the textures, we propose a hierarchical VQVAE, just like in this picture, we will have some uh, top level uh, code book and a uh, bottom level code book. The, the code books are, con uh, are constructed in multiple scales. So the code book in the coarser scale contains some more, uh, contain more structural information about the textures of clothing. And the code book in the finer scales include more detailed textures. And also, uh, due to the different natures of uh, different textures, we also build code books separate, separately for different textures. Like we will build the code books specifically designed for the pure color, and we will have another code book designed for the like the plate pattern or stripe pattern. Like we will have multiple code books. And with the hierarchical uh, with the hi with the hierarchical book to generate the final uh, human uh, image, we will have uh, the we will have we will, we need to have two uh, features like the green one and the the orange one. And so with the hierarchical code books, we need to sample the intermediate feature maps from the coarse level to the fine level. Like uh, in the VQVA setting, we just need to sampling the indexes for the both cost level code books and the uh, fine level code books for the final image synthesis. So let's first look at the, the sampling at the fine level. So in, in order to conditionally generate the human image consistent with the text descriptions, we need a sampler to select the appropriate texture representations from the corresponding code book. For example, in this setting, we, we, we want a uh, a code book with a pure color. So we need to uh, select the, uh, we need to sample the indexes for the, the, the from the code book or corresponding to the pure color and then arra arrange them in a, reason a reasonable order in the spatial dimension. So uh, in this manner with the rich uh, texture representation stored in the code book, the human generation task is formulated as to sample the uh, intermediate feature maps from the learned code books. So with the texture aware code book design, we introduce the mixture of experts into the sampler. So the sampler has the multiple index prediction experts to predict the indexes for different textures. And this is how we generate the, the course level index maps. And uh, at the second level, thanks to the implicit relationship between then between the code books at the at different levels uh, of the uh, hierarchical VQVAE, the indices of the code book at the uh, course level can provide the, some hints for the sampling of the of the fine level features. So we propose a feed forward code book index prediction network to directly predict the desired fine level code book index from the course level features. The proposed index prediction network speeds up the sampling process and ensures the generation quality. And, and this is the, 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 the whole framework of the text to human. And in this work to facilitate the controllable human generation, we also construct a large scale full body human image data set named uh, defection multimodal data set. And it contains rich clothing shapes and texture annotations, human parsing ma uh, masks and diverse attribute uh, classes and human poses. And this is the details of the data set. We have uh, over uh, 44,000 high resolution human images, including 
over 12,000 full body human images. And we provide the manually annotated human parsing labels and we extract dense posts for each human image. And we also manually annotate the key points and the uh, attributes for each image. And we also provide the texture, textual descriptions for each image. And then uh, let's see some comparisons of the proposed text to human uh, with some baseline methods. As shown in these two examples, the first example is to generate a pure color upper clothes with a denim altar and seven points and pure color pants. And the second example is to generate a floral uh, upper clothes with a pure color altar and three point jeans. Uh, as we can see, uh, compared to the baseline method, a uh, text to human is able to generate a human image with high fidelity and more consistent textures. And this is a comparison with another VQVAE based method, Taming Transformer. And since the Taming Transformer only supports to generate the human image from the human parsing. So in this comparison, we directly fed into the off-the-shelf human parsing to as the input. And we just compared uh, the performance of our stage two with the Taming Transformer. As we can see, uh, we will find some uh, artifacts in the, in the images generated by the, the Taming Transformer. Uh, and this is the comparison with uh, uh, some unconditional uh, generation method uh, given a uh, human pose. And the baseline methods are uh, one is the trion guy and another is the human guy. And as we can see, the, the images generated by our test to human has, uh, has, uh, is, is more, uh, has higher fidelity and it has more diverse styles like uh, not only in the, uh, the clothing types, but also in the, in the, the textures of the clothing. And this is an ablation study to show the, the every component proposed in our uh, framework. Uh, the first, uh, the first uh, ablation study is about the hierarchical design of the uh, hierarchical design of the test to human. As we can see with the uh, hierarchical design, the the the, the images are, are successfully can uh, the the reconstructed image can successfully recover some more high frequency details like this one. We will have more uh, clear plate patterns and the stripe patterns. And the second uh, the the second example is uh, the the second ablation study is on the mixture of X sampler. As we can see, if we if we sample the, the, the we will use one code book for all textures and then uh, the, 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 the images generated can not uh, successfully condition on the, the floral, floral, uh, floral labels requested as requested. And with the texture aware code book and the mixture expert designs, we can successfully to generate the floral uh, textures of, of the, the, the upper clothes. And the, the, third, uh, the third ablation study is about the design of the feed-forward index prediction network. And the comparison is uh, conducted between the VQVA2. And in VQVA2, it's also a hierarchical design, but to, to generate an image in VQVA2, we need to sample a feature map from uh, we need to auto regressively auto regressively sample a feature map at the coarse level and the fine level, and in our design we directly predict the uh, fine level indexes from the coarse level feature maps, and as we can see with the the feed forward index prediction network, we our method uh, with, with this design the the framework is able to generate the clear um 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 clear images and the uh, the, the 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 final the the the, the last uh, visualization of the ablation study is also about the feed for network and we can see after the uh, after the refinement of the fine level uh, the, the the fine level index 
like the use the after after the feed for index prediction the the plate patterns are um the the um are, are further refined compared to the uh images sampled uh using the the uh, using just the cost level index and this about the experiment and then we will show more interactive examples of the proposed framework like in this example we uh, provide the system with the test de descriptions of uh, the short sleeve t-shirt and short pants and the, the pure color t-shirt and denim and we can generate the human under the same poses and the same Test descriptions, uh, like uh, like just we go back, we can we can we can generate the human under the oh sorry, um, so just replay this video. The first example is to show that we can generate a diverse uh, human appearance under the same pose and the same textual descriptions. And then we can uh, manually revise the human parsings to, to change the desired final human image. Like we can add, uh, make the this leg longer. And we, we can also support the editing uh with the uh, textual descriptions like changing it to the long pants and we can manually add more details to the human parsing like to add some holes to the to the to the to the pants of the to the pants and make it more vivid so to summarize in this task task we propose a new task the controllable human image generation. And we propose a new method, test to human. And we also propose a new data set to support the, the study. And this is the, uh, the, 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 the introduction of the, uh, the, our recent paper of uh, published in SIGGRAPH 2022. And uh, in the next uh, few slides, I, I want just to briefly to uh, go through our previous work on also on uh, some human centric uh, content generation and uh, manipulation, and this is the work we we'll published in ICIC, ICCV twenty twenty one, and the title is to uh, talk to edit and uh, fine grain facial editing via dialogue. So, uh, in this paper, uh, the, we perform uh, we propose to perform fine grain facial editing via dialogue as shown in this picture uh, the user can uh, require uh, given a uh, starting with the uh, image the user can request to uh, make uh, make the the, the person uh, look like with a bigger smile and then the agent will edit accordingly and then will uh, uh, the, the agent will provide the the feedback to like uh, by asking uh, is the smell just right now and then the, the user think that the smell is uh, large enough and then the, uh, he proposed a, a further editing request to make the bands look longer and uh, let the bands to cover the, the eyebrows and the agent will then edit accordingly and then provide the feedback to 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 ask the <clears throat> the the user if the 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 the, the bands long enough and uh, and also propose a uh, new editing suggestions like maybe you would like to try editing the glasses instead and this is the the task and in the core of this uh, paper we propose to model a location specific semantic field in the pre-trained uh, gun latent space. And the, the method achieves superior results with better identity preservation and smoother change. And we also contribute a large scale visual language data set named uh, CWA dialog. So before we start introduce the, the details of our method, let's 
just look uh the how how uh just have a look how existing methods to to edit the the the, the facial attributes so uh there are some assumptions of the existing existing methods the the first assumption is that the uh, attribute chain the the attribute change is achieved by traversing along a string line in the latent space just like uh this one the the this line and the different identities share the same latent directions so uh it means that by uh for example in in this example uh, by adding the bands for any person uh they will uh, move the latent code uh along this line to to achieve the editing so the limitations of the existing method that the first one is the identity will drift during the editing and the second one is that some uh, other irrelevant attributes would be changed as well just like in this example the eyeglasses will be added when we just when we, when we add a beard for for this guy and some artifacts will also appear so in our method we we propose uh, to learn a semantic field in the gun latent space we consider the the, the nonlinearity of the attribute uh, attribute transitions. So this is the the how we edit the uh, the, the 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 black the, the black curve is how we add, add beard for this uh, for for this guy. We move the latent code along the curved field line, and and, and in result, our our um, semantic field make some smoother change and have better identity preservation. And this is the, the work published in ICCB. And then the another work also for uh, human image generation published in uh, ECCB 2022. And the title of the paper is uh, Style Gun Human, a data centric odyssey of the human image generation. And this is uh this work studies the unconditional human image generation, and it's surprising to see it is surprising to see that uh all human images in this page in in this page is are uh, all generated by the the Stalgan human, and it is uh, of high fidelity. And in this paper, we we study three key uh questions. The first one is the what is the relationship between what is the relationship between the data size and the generation quality? And the second question is, what is the relationship between the data distribution and the generation quality? And the third question is, well, why is the relation between the scheme? Uh, what is the relationship between the uh, scheme of data alignment and generation quality? So let's uh, first look at the first uh, question. What is the, rela the relationship between the data size and the, the generation quality? <clears throat> so uh, we generate the, uh, we, we, we train the, the style gun human with uh, different data size like the uh, 10,000 and 20,000, 40,000 and uh, 80,000 and 160,000 and two, 230,000. And as we can see, uh, uh, the, the FID will, will uh, uh, remain stable after we increase the data size uh, after the 40K, uh, 40,000 images. So we found that uh, maybe if the data, set, data size is limited, the uh, 40,000 40, uh, images are enough to generate the human images of high fidelity. And the second question is the relationship between the data distribution and generation quality. And as we can, uh, as, as we found uh, in, the, in the collected or uh, in, in, in the collected human images, uh, image data sets, we will have some, uh, we will have some long tail distribution just like the, the face angles of the the, the the data set and the like uh most uh like the uh <clears throat> like the most the data have the have have one type uh have one type of face uh angles just like uh uh, uh facing the front and then uh with this data we can uh it, it is hard to generate the the the, the faces the the human images and 
with some uh, rare poses like uh, like 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 these head poses. And as for the upper clothes, uh, uh, most of the most of the images have the, some uh, pure color pattern and few images have patterns. And so in 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 this uh in this study we we found that a balanced training set helps to improve the quality of human image with some uh, rare faces and clothing textures compared to the original uh, long tailed distribution. And then we come to the, uh, the, 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 the final question, the, the, the relationship between the data alignment and the generation quality. So we tried the three types of uh, data alignment method and we found that we use the middle point uh, of the body can have the better generation quality. The reason why we study the data alignment issue is that in the original uh, style gun design for human faces, we need to uh, we need to uh, pre-process the data to 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 make them to align uh, at the to to make the faces align in the in the in the center of the the image. So we we are curious about uh, for human images if we also uh, if the, the the data alignment is also important, yeah. And in in this study to perform better data investigation of the human generation, we also contribute a data set named SSH to a high quality and aligned full body image data set containing over uh uh. 230,000 images with a resolution of uh, 1024 times 1512. Uh, yeah, uh, this is all of my presentation and thanks for your listening. And just to see uh, if you have some, any questions about the, the, the presentation. Uh, you make wonderful presentation and wonderful work. Uh, thank you so much for, for this presentation. So uh, before I directly go to the participants, there is one question in the chat box um, asked by Appan. So Appan asks, uh, what does encoder decoder consist of? So uh, probably he's uh, pointing to very, yeah, very first yeah. slides, yes. Yeah. Uh, so uh, in this parsing to module, uh, part, post to parsing module, the mm -hmm. encoder uh, just have uh, the, the encoder is composed of some uh, convolution, uh, convolution neural networks, and uh, some uh, downsample operations is applied in the different stage of the decode, uh, encoder, and the uh, feature, the, the 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 features for the shapes are a uh, uh, are con concatenated to the human pose at the different uh, the, the features of the human pose at the different stage, and the uh, and the decoder is also consists of several uh, convolution operations, and we will have some up convolution uh, operations to scale up the, the 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 features back to the original resolution. Yeah, and hope this uh, address your. Questions? Uh, okay, uh, we, uh, you make with the same same slide. Um, yeah. I uh, I was just thinking like what this code book is and why why is it like important in in this uh, second phase here? Ah uh, yeah, the uh, that's a good question. The code book stores some uh, some uh, like the visual representations of the human uh, images. And uh, why it is important to sample the human images? And I think uh, since it stores some uh, rich representations, mm -hmm. uh, compared to the generating a human image from scratch, uh, I, I think it is more challenging to uh, directly sample some RGB values from the from scratch. And with the with this uh, con uh, rich content. Uh, stored in the code book, we just need to retrieve the representations from this code book and, and form into a, a feature map and then fed into the, uh, like uh, fed into our 
uh, pre-trained, uh, sorry. Like uh, we, with the, uh, we, we, can, we can retrieve the representations from the different code books to mm -hmm. form uh, this feature map and this feature map. And with these two feature map, we can directly generate the, the, the to synthesize the final human image. Final human image. Between the decoder top and decoder bottom. Yeah. Uh, okay. Okay. That's great. So, uh, so basically, um, you apply this concept uh, in the field of uh, in the business field, or is there any particular application for this uh, this work, this kind of work? I mean, I'm talking about the application of your work. Oh yeah, uh, I think the you mean uh, if this work has been applied to any other any real. Yeah, real world applications. Yeah, I think uh, currently not, but we will have a hugging face demo to for you to try to 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 see the 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 the, the, the performance of the 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 test to human. Ah, uh, okay, okay. Uh, you mean uh, just to uh, interrupt with you here. Open has asked uh, uh, the next question. How is dense pose generated? Yeah, uh, like uh, here, actually, uh, and here is also the dense pose. And I think that uh, the, the, the dense pose is uh, an off-shelf off uh, algorithm and we just use the, the open source code from the GitHub to, to extract the dense pose. And maybe I can, uh, uh, find uh, the, the 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 source code and later send it to. Right, right. We can we can say that. So dense. What is dense pose actually mean? Is it? Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, it's just a uh, uh, like this one, right? Mm -hmm. uh, it contains uh, actually it, it it is actually a three channel representation of the the human human and mm -hmm. the first channel. Uh, actually, it is IUV map. The, the I denotes the instance map. It will okay. it will uh, show the different. Uh, it contains the information of different uh, body components like mm -hmm. the the left head and the right head and mm -hmm. uh, the left arm and uh, right arm. It it has uh, I guess if my if I remember clearly it has it segments the the human the, the full human body into the twenty four uh, human parts. So, and this okay. is the this is the instance map, mm -hmm. and another another two are IUV, and the rest of uh, them are the the UV, and it have it, it it contains the the the, the coordinates of the UV mm -hmm. uh, in in the UV space. Uh, so I can I can also see like in basically in the joints over there, it's like red in color. Yeah, the yeah, joints yeah. like you know. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, so it represents those things. So before I ask you one more question, let me see if uh, there is any participant who wants to ask questions. Uh, they can simply unmute themselves and then they can ask. Is there anyone? Mm. Okay, uh, Yuming, uh, the last question from my side, uh, okay. Can you go to the ablation study? Yeah. Uh, right. uh, just uh, like this one. Yes. Uh, in the ablation study, like uh, uh, you you say that uh, you know you compare in the previous slide also you compared your work with the other one and then you yeah. uh, you mentioned that okay you found that uh, the one that you your work. Uh, has produced is more clear and then more uh, accurate, uh, let's say. But uh, how how actually you can say something is you know more accurate or yeah better oh, yeah. than the other one? Like, in, actually, uh, in in our in our paper, we will have some uh, qualitative uh, quantitative uh, evaluation uh, okay. to 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 quantify. Mm -hmm. If it is better, like uh, for the 
for the image quality, we will use yeah. the FID to define the, the quality. And uh, for the uh, attributes con consistency, we will uh, feed the feed like this image to uh, pre-train uh, attribute predictor to predict the, mm -hmm. uh, the, 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 the attribute of the, the clothes to see if it is consistent to the uh, required uh, the, the attribute labels. And so here in this presentation, I just show the show some uh, visual comparisons and sorry I, I have I, I miss it in, in the it's, it's okay it's like, okay I, I got your point. So there is something that quantifies uh, how better the the image is. Yeah 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 there is some yeah. quantifiable like values right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, okay. If you, if you uh, have interest, you can you can find more details in my paper. We in the paper itself. Tables to, sh tables to show the, the effectiveness mm -hmm. quantitatively. Yeah. Oh, wow. That, that's, I mean, the work is really, really great. Um, Yuming, thank you so much. Um, I think that's all for today. And uh, on behalf of... Uh, uh, graduate uh, students club i would like to thank you so much uh, accepting our invitation and presenting this wonderful work and uh, and uh, on behalf of graduate students club i wish you all the best and uh, in the future we'll definitely uh, you know keep in touch yeah yeah, yeah. thank you thank you for inviting me to give the talk with this talk yeah. yes Okay. Okay, Yumi. Have a have a great day. And uh, yeah, uh, closing uh, before closing this session, I would like to thank all the participants who attended this presentation. And uh, I would also like to inform you that uh, very soon we are coming up with the next uh, SLS talk, and that would be twenty first uh, episode. And please do remember to join the next episode as well, because we are really wondering. I mean, wonderful and really really enjoying. Uh, all the SLS talk and you know all the works that we have been uh, doing and publishing uh, to the world and contributing something to the scientific domain. Thank you guys. Thank you so much, and we'll see you next time. Yuming, thank you yeah. once again. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye everyone. Bye bye. Bye.